Rightio barbecuers, welcome back to the Backyard Grill. Um, been a while between drinks, haven't done one for a little while. Life's just um, gone a bit crazy lately, so I'm gonna do one that, this is a lot of people have asked me to do this one from that last post I put on um, the barbecue pages as a, as a photo. Um, had a lot of private messages to do a video on this one. Um, it's a beautiful beef fillet, beef tenderloin, um, and it's just an absolute, Oh, it's a showstopper this one, it's a good centre piece for your table. Um, awesome for the beginners, uh, which the reason most of the time we do these videos is to help out the, the guys that are just starting on the kettles and the barbecue pages. They're always asking what's a good first cook. Absolutely perfect. This is a foolproof roast, I'm going to turn this into a roast. Um, I stumbled across this cut because of um, trying to satisfy five people at home. One doesn't like crust, one doesn't like fat, one doesn't like bone. Along came the tenderloin, and this thing never, ever, ever gets left. Um, not a piece gets left. It's just a pure piece of red meat. Um, you can get the butcher to cut that for you like that. It can get a little bit costly. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's a beautiful tender piece of meat. Uh, all that you'll have to do is a silver skin. I'm just trying to cut this video down um, quite short for you. There's basically a little silver skin to strip across the top of that. Basically, you just get a knife and run that through, and you're fine. Any little bits of fat that hard, just peel them off. Any other bits of fat that around, leave it because we're going to give it a good sear and they'll melt away beautifully. Um, all right, so normally, as you all know me, uh, I'm a salt and pepper man, through and through on me. But the one that I did on that photo for the, um, on the page I posted, I did a little chimichurri and I actually marinated this for a few hours. Um, and it just blew me away. It really, usually I put a bit of chimichurri at the end while it's calm. But I did a marinade and I let it sit for about three, four hours and it was honestly just brilliant. So what I'll do, um, I'll quickly show you, a few people would ask me also what uh, chimichurri mix I do. All right, so what I basically, it's a really simple one, a cup of oil. I'm doing a little bit extra because I'm going to marinate and I'm going to keep half for the end. All right. A good handful of chopped parsley. A lot of people do this in a blender, in a little blender. I, don't, I do all roughly chopped. So, okay. One clove of garlic. A lot of people put three and four, but I think it just kills overpower. So one, one nice clove. Um, oregano, and don't use that shaker stuff. That use this stuff. Get yourself a little bunch and store it in a jar. One tablespoon of that. You probably need to get five tablespoons of that jar. Rubbish. So just put. A good pinch of that, a tablespoon of that, good pinch of pepper, same with salt, again with salt, everything I use is all coarse ground salt, like all flaky stuff, don't use the other powdered stuff, like I said in one of my other videos, use it for, um, if you get an infected toe, put in some water, and it's, it's just rubbish, use this flaky stuff, it's awesome. Um, Alright, so um, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. and chili. A lot of people use chili flake. I actually use chili in, in sunflower oil jar that I use just in general. I'll chop some up into that and just the flavors of that just blows you away. So you'll see the color of this, it's just orange. Oh, it's and not we actually very use hot. the chili itself. It's mild chili, so it's not hot. And last, just a little squeeze. Of lemon. Of lemon. <laughs> You can stir that up, mix that up, and we end up with a beautiful chimichurri. It's not your jet, it's not like your traditional one where it's really finely cut. You can see it's nice and it's sort of roughly cut, but the flavours are there. It'll be absolutely beautiful in that. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a snake, no. He thinks there's a snake. Um, all right, so what we're going to do? Um, again, with this beef tenderloin, a lot of people grab these and they will Get cut. I cut the eyes out. Um, a lot of people in that centre section, they'll cut nice thick steaks. When you go to a fancy restaurant, you get the nice fill uh, fillet mignons. That comes from this section here, so you'll get one, two, three nice big steaks, and that is, you know, you do what you want with it. Another thing people do is roast it as it is, and then the people who like the well done meat will have sort of this section and that section, but um, I don't invite people who like well done meat. That's only a joke, I'm only joking. Um, so what basically we'll do here, is we'll tuck this under like that. We grab both and touch them together. All right. And what we're going to do 
is we're going to end up with a nice even meat because obviously meat cooks at the height of the actual meat all right so what we'll do now i'm going to turn this off i'm going to tie this up now like this basically probably put four or five strings across tie it up i'm not going to show you that because it's just going to take too much time all right so all we're going to basically do i'll show you one is we'll get our string and we'll do a double loop so we'll go through once go through twice and we pull okay I'm going to do that across there, make it a nice uniform piece of meat into a nice little roast. I'll bring you back and we'll um, get the marinade going and uh, I'll show you the next step, all right? We'll see you in a sec. We're back. Um, so we've tied it up now, put one, two, three, four strings. Still not super uniform, a little bit bigger, but it's the, the shape of this tenderloin was quite big to small. So just have a play around with it, try to get it as, you know, as nice and round as even as possible. Um, now again, usually at this point here, I would just salt and pepper, boil salt and pepper this and go straight outside. So if you want to do that, you don't want to do the marinade, the, the, the method stays the same, it's just the recipe's going to change, all right? So if you want to stay basic and do your salt, pepper, garlic, now's the time, oil, salt, pepper, and hit it on, and I'll show you the next step. But if you want to marinate, get it done early, three, four hours early. So all we're basically going to do is put it into a tray like that, and we're just going to give it a nice coat it looks so green. I don't, I don't know if you can get a tenderloin any more tender, but marinating will give it a little bit more tenderness to it. All right, we're just going to give that, and what we'll to do when you do your sear, it's just going to form a real beautiful crust as well. All right, so all we're going to do is just give this a rub up over, and we end up like that. And we're just going to let that sit now for about three, four hours. I'm going to cook this for dinner, so it's lunchtime now. I'm going to let this sit for about three hours, three, four hours in the fridge. Take it out, get to room temp, and we're going to get outside and I'll, um, I'll show you the kettle set up outside. Very simple. This is, this is almost foolproof. You cannot really stuff this up. All you really need is temp. You need a temp uh, probe for this cook. It's just a quick sear, shift it over to the, uh, the indirect side. This also can be done on a barbecue, not limited to a kettle. If you've got a two zone barbecue, so you've got a you know, you've got your direct side here and you've got an indirect side there. So one side stays off, one side stays on. And you just basically, I'll show you that outside uh, next step. So it can be done both ways. So simple. All you do is you, you, you know, you pick your, um, you pick your temp which you want to, you go for, which is your favourite, um, and you go for it. Alright, so we'll get out there in a couple of hours time. We'll show you the kettle set up and we'll have some fun out in the sun. Alrighty, so we'll see you soon. Rightio, back to the kettle set up. Now, this is if you've got a kettle set up. It works both ways with a kettle or a barbecue, okay? So a lot of the times you can use a basket. I don't like to use a basket because then you're limited to one little spot on the grill. What I do is I bank up pretty much a chimney of charcoal on a, on, on a side, so I've got more of a grate to use. I can use a bit more of the grate. Now, the most frequent question ever gets asked on all of the um, pages and groups that I follow is fuel source, all right? There's no right or wrong. I have a theory which I follow for myself and it's it's basically low and slow, I use beads, briquettes. Anything hot and fast or direct, I'll use lump wood charcoal. As you can see here, I've got a bit of a mixture in here. <coughs> what I usually do is after a cook, I'll shut the kettle down and I'll, I'll save all of the old, old fuel and I'll put it into a separate bucket. And what I do is I use it for quick cooks like this you here. You can see the bean on the bead. Yeah. The so right. this, this cook will only take about 45 minutes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sear all four sides, okay? We're gonna do, because I, I know how this kettle, the heat I get from it, I'm gonna do three minutes exactly. I actually set a stopwatch. I'll do three minutes per side. If you do it for the first time on a barbecue, just check it after two minutes, have a look, put it back down, and then do it to your liking. I do three minutes, you can go a little bit more, a little bit less, your, your call, all right? So now that's raging hot. That's absolutely screaming. Yeah. Even we're if do. you were here on the camera, we're ready for right at my house. house. And that's what you want to hear. Ooh, right. look at the smoke so and the stop flame. Stop okay, so I'm not going to let you sit here and watch the whole lot. We're going to do three minutes. We're going to spin it to all four sides, three minutes a piece. That's and all basically sexy. we're going to do is we're going to roll it over to the indirect side, put a, th um, a probe in it and continue to cook until desired temp, all right? So we'll see you at uh, the first little spin and we'll check it out from there. Catch you soon.
Alrighty. That's pretty much see it up all over. I went four minutes either side on this time. It wasn't as hot as I expected. So like I said to you, again, check your heat source. That's beautifully seared all around, four minutes aside. And we'll be back after this last little bit to see it now. Rightio, finished searing. Okay, what we're gonna do now is my little assistant here is just gonna give it a baste as we roll it over. Yeah, just keep going. Beautiful sheen, look at that. Beautiful. Keep going. Okay. Look so, at those shearing marks. Beautiful. Basically now all we've done is we seared it and we just rolled it over to the indirect side. Okay? Mm -hmm. Probe. We're gonna put that smack bang in the middle. The put temperature. That there. Now, again, this is a huge argument in the meat world. Temperatures, medium, medium rare. Okay. Me personally, I'm a medium rare, closer to medium person. So I'm gonna take this to 130 Fahrenheit about 54 uh, Celsius, and basically at 130, pull it out, bring it out, rest it, ready to go. It's as simple as that, okay? If you like your 125, most people do the medium rares at 125 Fahrenheit, about 51 Celsius. I and our family do 130. That gives you a nice medium, still juicy, just that little bit more cooked than the, than the rare, okay? So we're sitting now at 95 degrees, okay? So it, probably about 20 minutes to 25 minutes this should be ready after that 15 minutes of searing basically all right so all we're going to do from this part we put our lid on just back the vents off to about half bottom half top and that's it just keep an eye on the temp you don't have to open it ever again as soon as that thing hits your desired temp mine is 130 i'll pull it out put it on a plate and we let it rest for about 15 minutes but i'll bring it to that stage next so until then Time to just chill about 20 minutes. We'll see you soon and we'll take it off. Alrighty, hit 130. Simple as that. That was that, that from go to O. No, you won't see it. You won't be able to see it. Okay, so we hit 130. Um, that from go to O was about 50 minutes. So, so simple. No temperature control on the, on the actual kettle itself. Just very simple. When itself. There you have it. What I might do is I'll just try it. Just match it with the inverter just to make sure. 129. Beautiful. Okay, so all we do now is pull the probe out. I'm a dreary ashy. We put that on a plate. And all we're going to do now is we're going to just put a bit of foil on that and let that sit for about 20 minutes. Let the juices do its thing. Um, and then we'll cut it up and we'll show you at the end. We'll see you soon. Okay, we're back. Final step. Uh, as you saw, that was so simple. Um, we've rested it for about 25 minutes, had a bit of foil over it. Um, now, usually what we do, on, on, a, on a dinner night, I would carve this up all into little pieces, spread it out, put some chimichurri, a bit of salt on it, and everyone would pick at it. But for the video, I just want to I'll just cut it straight down the guts just to show you. You can just see that, look at that. So look soft. Look how tender it is. It's so tender, it's beautiful. Okay. As you can see, can you see that, Mace? Can you zoom that in? You can see, still juicy. And basically all we do, look at that. Look at all of that juice. It's just beautiful, how soft it is. Alright, so we've got to do this. I'll try a piece without nothing first, just to see. Look at that, just, can you see that? Look, it just falls apart. It's so good. And because you've mixed the um, dip, it doesn't even taste with the ch chili, even though. Um, it's so good with the chimichurri over the top. Okay, so that's basically it. Really simple roast. Um, perfect for someone who's just starting out. It'll just give them the confidence to move on to a, a, a you know, bigger cook, in depth cook. So simple, but you get such a good result from that. As you can see, it's just so beautiful, tender, soft, medium. Um, can't go wrong, really foolproof this one here. All right, so again, like, share, comment, um, subscribe to the channel. Um, time to time at the moment, time permitting, I'll, I'll throw a few videos out 
um, hopefully a, a few more coming up. Uh, so until then, hope you enjoyed that, hope it inspired someone to give it a crack. Until then, happy grilling, happy Father's Day to all the fathers, hope to see some good cooks out on the pages over the weekend. Um, until then, happy grilling. Happy Father's Day everyone. Uh -huh.